Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in digital infrastructure. I'm Buffy Harakidis of JSA, and joining me today is Benjamin Von Zieger. He is the CRO of Selenium. Benjamin, welcome. Thank you so much, Buffy, for having us. We really appreciate the time and the opportunity. Yes, our pleasure to have you here today live yes. from ITW 2025. So why don't you tell viewers that are tuning in a little bit more about Stellenium, which absolutely. by the way, we were just discussing, I absolutely love the name of the Thank company. You so, much. Uh, so give us a little bit more about the meaning behind Stellenium and what the company does. Well, Stellenium uh, was born from an idea of creating sovereign AI. Um, we are the only company in the world doing this. We are moving forward with the government. We have a flagship facility in Thailand. Um, our business model is very different. We are not a data center company. We are an energy company. We build our own power plant. We build the data centers associated with that. We build a green backup solution. And then, of course, we build a data center AI ready for um, quantum computing, for uh, supporting AI factories, for supporting the platform from the uh, biggest hyperscalers. And as well, I came up with an idea which was floating for several years. Uh, the interconnect business is coming back. So I'm looking to building a network access point in our flagship facility in Thailand. Why? Because the hyperscale is going in connectivity and there is no such access point in the region at all. So carriers reach out to us and they say, okay, if you want to move in there, we're going to join you. But the only big connectivity point they have is in Singapore. So they love our business model and the fact that we're carrier neutral. And Thailand is the Switzerland of the Asia pack, so it totally makes sense to have the network access point added to the, to the entire uh, um, ecosystem, which is gonna to move towards the smart city. Yes, well, it's a stellar idea. Yes, Hence thank the you. name, uh, yes. Selenium, which well, was derived from stellar and millennium is what right. I hear. Try to bring it to the next millennium. Yes. And the right way. and. Uh, have data privacy, have data security, have the right uh, uh, um, uh, firewalls, have the right infrastructure in place to support sovereign AI. Because today, as I said, no one is doing it, but it's something that countries are going to have to start looking at much, much closer look into. Yeah, definitely. Why don't you tell us about the significant strides and the developments that you've been making with the new 300 megawatt NAP, and that's Network Access Point, uh, for those that don't know. And can you share more about this particular project and some of the key drivers? Absolutely, my pleasure. So um, the idea came from the fact that uh, every company today that is a data center company, they are limited to the portfolio that you get from the power grid, yes. right? If you have 300 megawatts, your revenue, it's already limited to 300 megawatts. However, I have, the, I have a different business model, a very aggressive one because now I'm an energy company and I have a thousand acres where I'm building 300 megawatts, but I'm building in phases. Uh, our anchor tenant is the federal government from Thailand. So we start already with the first 100 meg being pretty much sold out. And then we bring the hyperscales to serve the federal government. And the beauty of it is that we can support data center companies they want to build in the region and they can hire Stellenium to be the, uh, the builder, the operator, pretty much the smart hands, the remote hands, in the region, do the sales, uh, um, build the academy, and um, turn around. And if Digital Realty wants to have uh, 50 acres and they want a PPA agreement for us, we'll do that. And we are very, very strong on moving into ESG. So we're looking at environmental, sustainability, and green. So this is the beauty when you are not connected to the grid, you can do pretty much whatever we want to do it. And we, everybody in our leadership team, it's very, very focused on how we're going to take care of the CO2, how we're going to take care of the bio disposal. So, and um, we've been around for a year. I was appointed a little bit over a month ago. The, the traction that we had and the, the meetings that we had here, which is an incredible event. And we thanks GSA for always supporting us. We want to support GSA moving forward because this is going to be built like the royal family in England for the next 300 years. But now Israel just reached out to us, Morocco, Brunei, um, the governments from multiple countries in Africa where they have a data center that's only one to three to five megawatts. We have the know-how to build and we will move only with the governments and only with building our own infrastructure and our own power plants. Because the biggest problem they have in our industry right now is power. I spoke power, yesterday yeah. on a panel. Um, I can't believe I got very, very positive feedback, but I firmly believe that if we resolve the power issue, 
uh, uh, Buffy, we have 11,000 data centers around the world. So we have to start building in the regions, not, um, and, and uh, the question comes like, why do you do this, Ben? You've been in the industry for 25 years. I'm doing it and I look at numerous companies because I want to do an impact in the world. And I know it sounds crazy, but Mr. Beast goes over there and builds wells and homes. I want to be able to build infrastructure and have Wi-Fi for underprivileged communities and also build a, an, a, an academy where people can get certifications in the regions. But they're going to know how to go into a data center, they're going to learn what is a data center. We cannot just be building in the United States. Yeah. And we don't have power in the United States and it's a lot of restraints. So I have to go in the regions where I can control what I do, meaning from A to Z. And the very important thing is for us, the ESG. I mean, we're really looking into that. I know a lot of people talk about it, but we want to be as green as possible because we cannot destroy the planet. So, and how can you do it uh, if you are dependent on Dominion tele uh, energy? You can. Yeah. You are, and and based on what happened in Europe with the blackouts, I don't see any power company giving the entitlements, the permits as quickly. So when we move with the federal government, it's a completely different story. Because again, I need a serious anchor tenant and the sovereign AI data, um, it's it's really on everybody's plate right now. United States, California does all this, but there is data residency only in the state of Illinois, which just passed last year. There's no other regulations in the other states, so it's easy to build, it's easy to move forward, but eventually, they will want to have data residents. They want to have, they want to control their data. So we see what's happening with the geopolitics. So we are just trying to be carrier neutral and move forward and literally going to places like no one else has done before. So we're going to Ivory Coast, we're going to Morocco, we're going to Brunei, we're going to Israel. So we uh, hand in hand with the federal governments. Yeah. Well, you tackled a lot there yes, uh, and a lot of key topics that are important to us here at JSA and also as an industry as a whole. Thank you. Uh, especially when you talk about, you know, some of the initiatives around ESG and sustainability, uh, which obviously greener data is one of our core passion, mission, yes. uh, our key initiative and movement here at JSA. Uh, and some of the other topics that you talked about from the power dilemma that we're facing here in the world globally. Uh, and some of the things that your company is doing to minimize that. And I think that you talked a little bit about the panel that you were on yesterday. So yes. I just want to bring it back to that for a second. Sure. It was called, Can Our Network and Data Center Handle the Surge? Um, so obviously you're talking a lot about the pressing challenges during uh, that panel. What were some of the key takeaways and how do you see the industry evolving to meet those needs? So it was, a, it was an incredible panel. My colleagues from Nokia, from Telehouse and from Digital Realty were next to us. So we were all on the same page. We are very fortunate right now that Sienna and all these other companies have developed very powerful equipment so we can go to the edge. That's why we are going to build in the edge. But again, I cannot emphasize enough the, the importance of building our own power plant. Because as I said earlier, what I took away from the panel is that if someone would have gave me $100 yesterday on that panel for the word power, I would have been a millionaire by now because I use that word so much that it's literally, um, we, we, we do this the right way in Thailand, then they're gonna follow us. And bringing the network access point back, NVIDIA pushed the telcos to take ownership again. So we all know from AT&T to Zero, everybody saw the data centers, but now we want to work with the telcos. We want the interconnect. That's why I'm so focused on the network access point because creating that, that um, critical mass yeah. is going to bring uh, the, the future technologies that we're going to have an interview in 24 months. We're going to be talking about the next AI generation that we don't even know today. Uh, right immediately after the panel, I met with Dan Caruso. They are already developing a 100 to 200 kilowatt um, cabinet that is going to support quantum computer and quantum intelligence. So, and they're going to be cool with Freon. So we have the know-how after 25 years building data center. I hope that I know how to do this. Right. So to go in and already prepare the data center that when they come with uh, the, uh, the, the, the two megawatt cabinet, which is going to happen because six weeks ago, NVIDIA came out with 640 kilowatt cabinet. Just let's sink in for a moment. If you take 20 cabinets, you already have a 1250 megawatt data center, so 12 cabinets. Uh, Google not to be beaten to the punch. They came back, oh, we have a one megawatt cabinet. So Dan Caruso, who's 
we all know who Dan Cross is in the industry, is behind the, a company that's going to produce a specific cabinet, 100, 200 kilowatts, cooled with Freon. So this is what we're looking for, we're looking to innovate. Uh, we have to. It's no other way around yeah. it. That's what we're going to achieve the green uh, uh, solution. And I know a lot of CEOs say, I'm not going to a data center if they don't have a green solution. It's not going to be a decision anymore. It's going to be a necessity. So our backup solution is also going to be green. And we cannot go too much into details yet on how we're going to dispose the, of the bio, diesel and all that. But we have all the, uh, the, the executives that I'm working with, they are all professionals and we all pull in the same direction. So literally to make the world a better place because yeah. we already build data centers, we already made the impact. So I, we got nothing else to prove, but now we have to move into the next phase. The next phase of innovation and yes. of, you know, what comes next. Absolutely. And you gave some great insights there for our viewers. So thank you so much thank of you. what's ahead yes. and how the industry is coming together to not only innovate, but to leave the world a better place. So is there anything else that you wanted to add today to our viewers tuning in? Well, um, um, the, the one thing that I really look uh, like for me personally, my career, okay, so what's next? I always like to plan my career in five-year increments. So I want to be, build these flagship facilities, and then I want to be very interested to move into the academia portion of it because I firmly believe that we have to invest more into that. It cannot be that um, we have to send an engineer from the United States to go and do something in Thailand when there are intelligent and smart people in the region. And again, moving with the federal government gives us a lot of scissors and we cut the red tape. So also, I don't have to deal with a lot of problems that are happening in yeah. the geopolitical world right now. So for me personally and for the viewers out there is like, uh, pick up uh, um, your phone, go and look in chat GPT for a moment, go and look in Claude, see see what DeepSeek is doing and get, get a little bit curious because once you get curious and you see this industry, and I would like to see more young talent and I would like to see the companies innovate a little bit more because I feel like we are lacking on the innovation. And my CEO is asking me every five minutes, why, Ben, please explain to me why nobody's doing this. I'm like, because it's not as easy as people think. We've seen a lot of people get into our industry trying to catch the gold rush. The, the, the faster they came in, they got faster out. So now the people that have been in the industry like Jamie and I for 25 plus years. I don't want to say how long because that makes us young, yeah. but we have, we have a, I think that we have a responsibility for the next generation to build the right thing and also build the academy. So, um, because we need, we, we need this, it's, it's necessary. The next generation definitely holds the key. And one yes. thing that you mentioned was staying curious and that's yes. actually our outro yes. here at JSA TV. Thank so thank you viewers for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV. Thank, thank you, you so much for joining thank you. us. Again, thank you viewers. Stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking. Thank you.